Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I built these super sweet cedar planters. In the description, I've linked to a full set of build plans that don't completely suck, like many of the ones I found on Pinterest, which is why I actually decided to make this video. If you follow me on Instagram, then you already saw how I stumbled across a pot of cedar gold. And I'll show you those clips when we get back. So stick around, this is gonna be a good one. So I think I just hit the mother load and banged a quick U-turn. for some wood that I might be able to use on my next project, which are gonna be some planters. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, we'll make this work. Some nice pieces. Cool. Well, I gotta say, I have no issues picking material out of a dumpster. If I can reuse it into a project, Instead of that wood going to sit in a, in a landfill somewhere and rot away. We start the three layers by measuring the plastic insert and set the miter saw to an eight degree angle. Before transferring any measurements, I like to cut one side of the top layer on all four boards to speed up the process. Minimizing the number of times I change the miter from left to right is a huge time saver. With one side cut to the correct angle, I flip the board and transfer the measurement I took from the plastic planter to the long side of the board, which will become the top of the planter. Me and angles don't always get along, so I put a light guideline on which way the miter cut should be. When I'm satisfied that I didn't screw up the measurement, I go ahead and transfer the length on the remaining three pieces of wood by aligning the two cut sides with a straight edge. And then back to the miter saw to make the cuts. Cutting the middle layer is the same as the top layer, where I already made the miter cut on one side, but we use one of the top layer pieces to mark the top of the middle layer with the bottom corner of the top layer. That's a mouthful. I will not use a measuring tape for the rest of this build as everything is marked in place. Once I'm happy that both sides perfectly line up, I go ahead and transfer the measurement to the remaining three middle pieces. I follow the same process to measure and cut the bottom layer, but using the middle board as the guide. And to avoid complete boredom from you viewers, watching the process twice is enough and we now have three layers cut ready for assembly. Well, not exactly. We need to add a bevel to the top and bottom layer so you don't end up like the crappy plans on Pinterest. You'll see why in a minute. I set the bevel angle using the digital angle gauge. If you don't have one of these, you are missing out. I'm only adding this bevel to the bottom edge of the bottom layer and the top edge of the top layer. Okay, I promise. Now we can start assembly. The entire planter is assembled using brad nails and wood glue. The nails should be stainless steel so they don't rust and you'll want an exterior wood glue like Titebond 3 which I'm using. 
The stainless steel brad nails were kind of hard to find in local stores, but I have linked to them at Amazon in my product link in the description below. I start with assembling the bottom layer, making sure the beveled edge is flat on the surface with the top side angled out. Simple butt joints are used with glue and brad nails as fasteners. If you don't have one of these rubber glue mats, I highly recommend you go pick one up. All of the glue drips just peel right off. Keep working my way around, gluing and nailing. The final side sits nice and tight inside the opening. Isn't it pretty? One down, two to go. The middle section doesn't have any bevels to think about. Simply work your way around fastening and gluing. If you're wondering, I absolutely love the Milwaukee Brad Nailer. No more dealing with noisy compressors and it's definitely worth the money to get one. The top section does have the bevel that we added to the top edge, which should be parallel to the work surface once tilted out. This is no bueno. Or not good if you don't speak Spanish. Now you have it, right? This project is all about repetition. Same assembly steps as before. With the three layers complete, we can now move on to building the face frame, and we're going to start off by working on the right styles. Right now I'm ripping down four pieces of wood that are going to be used for the right styles to the proper width. And I'm not worrying about the length yet, we'll do that in the next step. I line the piece up with the side of the planner and mark the bottom. This will help with my miter saw setup. A compound cut is required on the styles and is made up of a miter cut which is adjusted by changing the base angle and the bevel cut which is made by adjusting the angle of the actual blade. I cut the bottom edge of the four right styles and label each side of the planner A through D and each style, noting the side and top of the style as these angles can start to get confusing. With the bevel flat on the surface and aligned on the right edge, I make a mark on the top and also add a guideline for the bevel. Making sure the saw is set in the correct orientation, I make the top cut. I do a quick test fit, making sure all the bevels are in the right place. The top edge aligns flush. And then go ahead and fasten with glue and brad nails. I complete all of the right styles before moving on to the left styles.
If you're enjoying this video, please take a second to subscribe to the channel and introduce yourself in the comments and let me know where you're from. I truly appreciate your support and love to see where in the world these videos are finding you. With all four right styles in place, I move to the left style. The left style is wider than the right because when assembled it will cover the edge of the left style, adding the width of the right style board to the overall width of the left style. So each are equal widths. Confused? Yep. I would be too. Let's try that again with a visual. The narrower right style plus the thickness of the edge of the left style creates a right style equal to the width of the left style. All of the steps to build the right style are exactly the same as the left. Next up are the top and bottom rails, which both need to have a bevel added to one edge. After cutting a miter on one side, I make a mark where the inside edge of the left style hits the rail, and then I inch up to that mark ensuring a super duper perfect tight fit. If you're stubborn like me and can't admit I should have taken another 30 second off the length, just resort to beating it in place with a hammer. There you go, just keep smashing it. Here's proof you don't have to cut it perfect. Fits like a glove as planned. The bottom rail is an identical process to the top, but the bevel is obviously down on the work surface. I didn't even have to use a hammer. Or did I? Oh gosh, you guys are too kind. Thank you. And to top it all off, quite literally, I add a top cap with 45 degree mitered corners using the inside corners of the planter as the mark for the 45 degree cut, making sure the top cap is flush with the inside of the planter. This top cap really gives the planter a nice polished, clean look. It covers up the edges of the base frame and the top layer. And overall, I just think it's a nice final touch. I bet you thought we were done, but not quite yet. Adding some rubber feet give the planter some grip and also keep the wood from sitting directly on the ground where it will wick up water and deteriorate the box quicker. These feet I'm using are also linked below and they work great and are inexpensive. Lastly, we need to support the plastic insert so it's level and doesn't sink too far down into the planter. The first option is to use some scraps and fasten on a ledger on all four sides for the lip of the planter to rest on. I did not go with this option, which is why I'm not really measuring and just tacking on a scrap piece just to show how the concept would work. 
This isn't a bad option, but I worried about the weight of the planter and the soil and water pulling down on the sides of the planter over time. I decided to go with a simple stand which the entire insert sits on. I like this idea because it transfers the weight of the soil and plants directly to the ground and not to the sides of the planter. This is really simple to build using some leftover scraps. The downloadable build plans include all dimensions for the planter and the pot support. Go check the plans out, you'll love them. Basically, we're building a box, making sure the height of the box allows for the top lip of the plastic insert to be right about a half inch below the top cap. Now is a great time to mention that these planners are a fantastic way for a beginner woodworker to start making some money selling finished products. Most people start out with cutting boards, and there's nothing wrong with cutting boards, but I feel like the, the markets are saturated with them. Depending on your market, these planners can make you four or 500% profit on top of your material cost. That's not bad considering once you get the hang of the angles, you can probably knock out a full planner in less than four hours. I decided to leave the planters as natural cedar, but you can stain them any color you wish. Bright yellow, blue, gray, black, whatever. Have fun with it. Well, I hope you liked the video. I'm really trying to improve on uh, my video and editing and sound just to bring you guys the best content that I possibly can. The best way for you guys to support me and this channel is to subscribe to the channel and also use those affiliate links that I've provided in the blog post and uh, check out the build plans that I offer on my website and also Etsy.com. If you like this video, you're going to love these two videos that I picked for you. Thank you and we'll see you on the next one.